Wayne Nash envisioned his retirement years as something down the road, a time when he would travel with his wife and spend time in his garden. I come out here as my moment of zen, if you will. I come out here and like it took me two or three hours to plant this bed of onions and I just sat here and I think about everything. But after 25 years as a family physician, his retirement came sooner than expected. Every day I think about, about the Alzheimer's. So I have the memories of my, you know, my mother, my father, my brother, and my aunt and my grandmother. Because of his family's medical history, Dr. Nash decided to be proactive about the disease that has no cure. Hey, good Hello to see there. you again. He volunteered for a groundbreaking study at UT Southwestern's Alzheimer's Disease Center. I wanted to get involved. And I wanted to be monitored, so if I had a problem, then I was going to quit practicing medicine. I've always said that. Uh, I wanted to feel like that I could be involved some way. Follow my finger with your eyes. Dr. Nash's plan was to be a healthy or control subject, but when he went in for testing, he knew that his life was about to change dramatically. I came up and had the test done, and I knew when I was in that room back there that I had a problem. I didn't care what they told me, or I knew I had a problem. The diagnosis was mild cognitive impairment. Dr. Nash had always told himself that he would retire at the first sign of memory problems. He told his staff and patients goodbye but his job as an advocate for Alzheimer's research had just begun. He really represents what the face of uh, memory disorders, mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease is becoming. It's no longer the person who can't function in anything and goes into the doctor and you can readily tell that they have a significant dementia. Testing showed that Dr. Nash had very subtle impairment, making him an ideal candidate for current Alzheimer's studies. The goal of today's research is to identify the earliest changes in the brain through imaging, biomarkers such as blood or cerebral spinal fluid, and cognitive testing. To participate in the study, you, you, you feel like you're helping other people and providing a source of uh, information that can be used in the future for people to find a cure for Alzheimer's, a way to treat it, a way to prevent it. You know, it's no small thing when someone has been coming to our, our clinic for years to help with research and they say something like, you know, this is like our second family here at, this, at the clinic. And it's because they know they can call a coordinator at any time. It's the only way that we're going to have better answers and better treatments for the future for Alzheimer's, for Parkinson's, for every disease that you can think of. Until those answers come, Dr. Nash is keeping busy. He blogs about his gardening. My close relative, younger than me, has had Alzheimer's disease now. And his journey with Alzheimer's. He wants to do everything he can to educate and reach out to those who are also living with the prospect of the disease. Dr. Nash and his wife, Joanne, have refocused their lives on what's most important to them. We just take every day. Don't sweat the small stuff. We just feel very fortunate, you know. We have a great life. One day I won't be able to plan this or plan it or enjoy it anymore. You know, I think about every day that I'm out here. And uh, I know that one day that's going to happen, but my wife and I have learned to enjoy the moment.